Hello and welcome to the Oak and Lamb YouTube channel. My name is Becca Oaks. I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb and today's video looks a little bit different. As you can see, I'm in a car. I wanted to do a video on a fun TikTok trend that I am seeing become more popular. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but people are taking vintage or thrifted scenery photos, wall decor type pieces and painting little tiny ghosties in them. And it's adorable. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll pop up some examples here. So stinking cute. It's not necessarily my style because I don't really decorate for Halloween, but I thought even maybe one little piece, maybe in my half bathroom or entryway table or something like that might be cute. The problem for me is that I'm not a really good painter. So I'm going to try to paint some with some acrylic paint pens because that seems to be the easiest way for me to paint. But I also have created a cup file that's available to Oak and Lamb members on the website. It's a cute little ghosty that kind of looks painted and you can print and cut a sticker and place it on the uh, photos as well, the, the wall art as well. So that's an option. I have about 45 minutes kid free right now. So I'm going to run into Goodwill, our local thrift store here in Morristown and see if there are any good finds for this particular project. We'll see. I'm going to take you in. We do, Morristown is a small little city. And so I, I don't think our Goodwill compares very well to larger cities, you know, like Atlanta or Nashville or something like that. It can, it's a little sad. So oh, we may not find anything. I don't know. I might have to go to like CARM or something like that and, and look for another one. But this is, this is interesting. I'm excited. We'll see what we find. I'll take you in. So as anticipated, the options look pretty grim, but let's take a closer look and see if there's anything that might work. Okay, I think we may have found a winner. It might be cute to put some little ghosties in there and those trees. I also found this one, but it is so huge. I'm really afraid that I would have nowhere to put it. So maybe this one. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed that picture from Goodwill. It was half off, which made it $4.93. But I am going to run into CARM, which is a Knoxville Area Rescue Ministry. It's, an, it's a local thrift store that we have here as well and see what they have. Typically, they have stuff that's a little bit nicer. I don't know if you noticed, but the frame on that one was all beaten up, but I can paint it. Not a big deal. So if I don't find anything here, then we do at least have one good option. Okay, if nothing else, their photos are a lot easier to look through. They're displayed a whole lot easier, but I think I have found a really cute little option right here. Look at this one. Adorable. I like the size of it a lot. This one right here would also be a good option. Could you imagine the cute little ghosties up on the hill with the lighthouse or even over the water? cute that would be cute i'm also going to grab this one because i like the size of the smaller ones i think it's going to be really cute okay so i found some fun ones and we are ready to get started i did enlist the help of a less abhorrent painter than myself as i mentioned earlier i'm really bad at it anna here is a much better painter than me and i've brought her in she's done a little test out i'll show you in just a minute it's adorable but she was using the acrylic paint pens. No bueno. She, she's not a fan of that for this particular project. Why, Anna? Well, because in order to get the layering for the shading and the highlights and the low lights, it makes the paper too wet and it starts gumming up and yucky. Okay, so we have used acrylic paint. Two colors, a black and a white. And then I'll show you in a minute, she's mixed some, some grays, maybe one gray. So what I typically do is put my white and my black on and then I will take some and make a dark gray, then take some from that dark gray, put it and make it a lighter one. And then from the lighter one, take a bit and put it in another lighter one so that it just makes it less concentrated as it goes. So we have lots of shades of gray so that we can go in there and um, weaving her in <laughs> shade. I've and never painted a, uh, a ghosty a ghosty before. This is cute. This is cute on here. That one's not. That was that it was, was the paint pen. It's a test. So now we're gonna do it on this one. I'm, she's gonna show you. We do have our paint puck here. 
um, just so that she can rinse out her brush, a little tiny brush. Did you use this, Anna? That was what I mixed just for my other color. Okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and go to an overhead view, and she is just going to paint, kind of show what she does first. Like maybe she, I, I don't know, I wasn't really watching. She probably does the outline first, fills it in, and then goes in and shades, and then does the eyes. I, I don't know. Well, I've only ever made one, so yeah, maybe do it the second time. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to watch her do that. It will be all sped up. If she has any instruction, then I'll stop it so that she can give that instruction. I didn't want my uh, body of my ghost to be super white, so I made it like a slightly, slightly tiny bit of a gray, and then you go back in and do your highlights with your brighter white. So just start with your little bit of a gray. And this is a more medium-sized brush. Yes, yeah, because you're going to, this is a, a bigger point so just look and say where does it look like a ghosty would be i'm gonna put one right here because it kind of looks like they're running from it i guess i like it so really quickly while you're making the outline uh talk about the bottom edge you're not making it straight across you want it to look like the end of a bed sheet almost yeah, right so i'm kind of just pouncing it so that it doesn't have a super super um harsh line on the parameter and at the bottom um all the ghosties that i've seen i've never actually seen a lot of ghosts in my lifetime uh, but the ones of the examples uh, looked like they were flared out a little bit at the bottom. So, and the other thing I'm noticing, see how she's pouncing the whole thing. She doesn't want it to look smooth because pouncing it will give it a little bit of dimension, which will make going in and adding the different shades of gray for the shading even easier. And it makes it a little bit more lifelike, I think. Well, and then also with this specific one, you can see it's not a super smooth I mean, this is not going to look realistic by any means, but I think that's the beauty of it, though. Yeah. Just go ahead and shoot the base of your um, ghost with either a heat gun or a blow dryer, whichever, just so that it's not super tacky. As you can see, it's got some lighter spots and stuff in it. Now, you can go back in later and fill those in if you don't want to, but or if you don't like them. But um, with us putting highlights and lowlights in it, it will kind of even it out a little bit. I'm going to go in with a super tiny precision brush. And with this, I don't put a ton on there because I like it to look not as intentional, but I'm getting the medium or the, the darker of the gray and just put tiny streaks. And if you don't, that's the good thing about acrylic. If you don't like how dark something is, you can always go back over it. And then just your solid black for the eyes. And now I think we're gonna add a second one up in this corner. So she made that look way too easy, didn't she? For those of us who can't paint, we're going to give this fun option. I, I chose this, this larger one for this because I thought the stickers would look good. We're going to do printable vinyl ghosties on here. So we will measure where we want to put them, see how big we need to put them. And then we're going to jump over into design space and look at the file. Like I did mention earlier, this little ghosty file is available on the website oakandlam.com for all Oak and Lamb members. If you are not a member and would like to join so that you can benefit from this cut file as well as tons of other cut files with free commercial use license, in addition to our member-only content, member-only courses, private Facebook group, and more, use the code 35OFF for $35 off the annual membership. You will not regret it. It will be so much fun. Our community here at Oak and Lamb will welcome you with open arms and lots of suggestions and cheerlead you in your crafting journey. So 
As far as the Prince and Cut stickers that we're going to be doing today, I am just using my maker. I have a printer here, just an inkjet printer, and I'm going to be using Cricut printable vinyl. I rarely use Cricut printable vinyl, but this is more of a matte vinyl. It cuts really well, it prints really well, and I don't need it to have any like water resistant or waterproof type properties because it's going on this picture. So I feel like this is going to be a really good product for this particular project. So I have a strong grip matte, and honestly, other than a, a couple of weeding tools and things like that, I should have everything that I need. So let's measure this and then we'll jump over into design space. So I'm thinking that I'll put one kind of hovering right here and maybe one down here. So let's just measure this one. Honestly, I probably wouldn't want too much bigger than around three inches. And then this one, what I need to look out for is the width. So we're going to look at about one and a half inches in width here by whatever accommodating height that is. So three inches high and then one and a half inches in width. Let's jump over to design space. Okay, over in design space, I'm just gonna go ahead and upload my little ghosty image here and add it to the canvas. It is a PNG file, so you don't have to do anything to it. It's already ready for print and cut. All I need to do is size it. This is not an SVG. I did not create it as an SVG because all of these different variations all the different gradients here would be way too many layers. It would not cut well, so you can't change the colors or anything like that. Like I mentioned earlier, I want one of them to be three inches. So I'm just going to, with the size lock ratio intact, put three. That will make it 1.28 inches in width. And I mentioned earlier that 1.4 or 1.5 inches in width was the max width that we needed for the other one. I don't want him that tall though. So we might um, play around a little bit. I'm going to press command D, which will duplicate this. And then let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little better. I might make him just a tiny bit smaller. And then let's unlock this size lock ratio and make him a little squattier and see what that looks like. So this particular file does really well when you unlock the size lock ratio and make it squattier um, instead of keeping that ratio intact. And so I think that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Let's go ahead and click make it and then we will print this out and cut it out and get this put on our picture. We'll go ahead and press continue. We'll press send to printer. We are going to use our system dialog box. We'll press print. And then underneath design space, a print dialog box will pop up. We'll go ahead and increase our print quality to best and press feed from rear tray. Now we'll go ahead and take our printed vinyl and place it in the top left hand corner of our mat and I'm just going to bray this down so that it attaches really nicely to the mat. Then we can go ahead and load our mat and choose our material setting. The material setting that we'll be using is printable vinyl. It is one that we use a lot. This is for a kiss cut, which means it will only cut through the top layer. It does not cut through that backing. If you want it to cut through that backing, then use a craft board setting and it will do a die cut all the way through. Now we'll grab our favorite weeding tool and just go ahead and weed off the excess. You can see there's quite a bit of vinyl that we did not use there. So if you have other stickers that you want to make, go ahead and put all those together so you're not wasting that. Let's go ahead and remove this and then we'll place these little ghosts on our picture.
And there you have it, two fun options for this cute trend. We love taking part in trends like this. If you know of anything that is becoming trend worthy, let us know and we'll take a look at it. It's super fun. If you're not a subscriber here on the YouTube channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. It is free to do that and you can hit the bell to turn on notifications and know every time we go live or post content like this. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you here another day for another video.